The movie is set in 1952, during the deadly Korean War. At the start, we see a group of famous Chinese snipers called the Fifth Squad wandering around a snowy hill. They are known for their accuracy, resilience, and dedication to work. We get to know that they are on the hunt for American enemies as the squad leader Liu takes out his binoculars and tracks some of them. After a while, he assigns each squad member specific enemies to shoot, as this will lead to an effective execution. Obliging to the order, the soldiers take their position and start firing at their specified targets. In a matter of seconds, it appears as though everyone is dead. But soon, one American rises up, implying that a member of the fifth squad missed their shot. Don't feel bad. They're Americans, so they've probably got plot armor. Liu targets the enemy, but to his surprise, the man gets on the back of his truck and opens fire with a machine gun. The squad quickly disperses and lays down, while Liu rolls sideways to avoid getting shot. Then he points his sniper at the enemy and finishes him off with a clean shot through the head. This makes all of his team members stare at him in awe. Uh, guess it wasn't Bradley Cooper after all. Elsewhere, a group of American soldiers are seen in their barracks ready to roll out. Their superior, Captain Williams, approaches them and asks who gave them the order to head off. He then finds out that a soldier named John has been sent by Congress to track Liu's fifth squad. It turns out that John is keeping two of the fifth squad intelligence agents hostage for his plan to take down Liu. Captain Williams, however, is not satisfied with this and thinks that John is in it for the fame. On a cold morning, the fifth squad is seen in their barracks, talking while sipping on hot bowls of soup. Shortly after, Liu arrives and informs them of their new mission. They have just found out that two of their intelligence agents have been ambushed, so they will have to head to the valley where the ambush took place and bring them back. The soldiers immediately get ready. However, Liu orders one of them, named Dayong, to stay back. It turns out that some reporters are coming to interview Liu, but as he is busy, he wants Dayong to stay back and be interviewed as he is the only one in the group who is educated. The latter wants to head to the war zone and rescue his friends, but he also cannot go against the orders of his captain. Shortly after, the reporters arrive, and they ask Dayong several questions about the fifth squad, and specifically, Liu. However, Dayong replies by expressing his disappointment in not being involved in the new mission. This is specifically because his best friend Liang is also an intelligence agent who has been missing for weeks, presumably captured by the Americans. Unable to continue with the interview anymore, Dayong approaches his other subordinate and begs to be let go so he can join the gang. Feeling sympathy, the kind subordinate promptly agrees and sets him off. A few hours later, Dayong finally manages to catch up with the fifth squad. Liu is unhappy to see him there, but nonetheless, he doesn't say anything and keeps marching. Shortly after, they reach the valley, and from afar, Liu uses his binoculars and spots two bodies on the ground. He identifies one of them as Liang. He then orders the squad to move on ahead while he stays behind on the lookout. Despite the obvious danger, a few soldiers risk their lives and start carrying the bodies. Unfortunately, while they are at it, Liu notices a light reflecting from the trenches. Realizing that they have fallen into a trap, he yells at the squad to get down, but it's too late. The Americans open fire and kill three members of the fifth squad while the others run and take cover. Yi, one of the surviving members, notices his friend bleeding out profusely and decides to assist him. Captain Liu denies him permission, but Yi has already made up his mind. Dayong hurls a first aid kit in his direction, but unfortunately, before Yi can get to it, he is shot and killed. The assailant is none other than the new American soldier, John, that douche who's just in it for the babes. A few minutes later, Liu devises a strategy so that he can move closer to the rest of the squad. He instructs three of them to lay down down suppressing fire on the enemy location, while Dayong will use a spoon to locate their exact whereabouts. Soon, both sides begin pelting each other with bullets, and taking advantage of the opportunity, Dayong finds out where the enemies are located. With this information, Captain Liu uses his impeccable sniping skills to take down one of the enemies. Subsequently, he runs over to Dayong and yells at him violently, blaming him for Yi's death. Just then, a Korean boy named Yuan makes his way into the battlefield. He starts dragging the unconscious Liang's body prompting both John and Liu to open fire near him to catch his attention. Moments later, the enemies lure Yuan and take a hold of him. Meanwhile, the fifth squad comes up with a strategy to obtain the agent's bodies while the enemies are distracted with Yuan. One member of the squad, <laughs> Chubby finds a large metal shield and decides to use it on his back, which is attached to a rope that the group holds. John and the other enemies start shooting at him, but Chubby remains unharmed. Unfortunately, the rope snaps, and he is forced to use both his hands to hold the shield. The Americans easily target his hands and then his head, killing him brutally. 
Oh, chubby, we barely knew you, buddy. Witnessing this, the remaining members of the fifth squad are devastated. Immediately afterwards, the little boy Yuan is released. He approaches Liang's body and injects him with adrenaline, as per John's request. Shockingly, Liang opens his eyes, leaving the fifth squad in utter disbelief. It turns out Yuan knows Liang, as the intelligence agents mostly linger around the locals. The two talk for a while before the little boy leaves the battlefield. Afterwards, Liu puts together a plan to take out the Americans one by one. Two members of the squad begin to dig the trench deeper to catch the enemy's attention. At the same time, Liu and Dayong stay alert and aim their rifles towards the opposite trenches. As expected, the Americans fall for their ruse and fire at the digging shovels, giving Dayong and Liu ample time to take them out. Furious, John uses a machine gun and shoots a bombshell where two members of the fifth squad are going to flank. This results in their immediate death, leaving only Captain Liu, Dayong, and the last member, Leoer alive. At this point, the three have become somewhat hopeless, but since they are members of the fifth squad, they decide to fight until the last breath. Hence, Lin and Dayong decide to flank the enemies, while Leoer stays put on lookout. The two manage to outplay an enemy troop, and Liu shoots him in the head, killing him. Afterwards, the fifth squad regroups, and notices that the adrenaline is wearing off on Liang as he slowly becomes unconscious. So, they start singing a patriotic song to keep him awake, and also probably to alert the enemy to their location. Meanwhile, one of the enemy soldiers and John's junior, Jack, begins speaking over a loudspeaker phone in Chinese. He wants to negotiate with the fifth squad by sending Liang back to them in exchange for Liu. Surprisingly, Liu agrees without any hesitation, despite a huge possibility that the deal may be a scam. He then drops his weapon and slowly makes his way to the enemy base, while Liu, who's in charge of retrieving Liang, accompanies him from behind. After walking for a bit, Liu stops and uses his hands to signal that Liang's body should be sent back first, before he goes on further. John agrees, and so Leoer starts carrying the injured agent on his back. With this, Liu also resumes his journey to the enemy's base, when suddenly, Leoer is shot by an unknown force which startles them all. Enraged at the betrayal, Liu pulls out a grenade and sprints towards the enemy base. He sacrifices himself as the grenade explodes and torches the American base, killing a few enemies inside. Meanwhile, Leoer is still alive, but cannot move due to his leg wound. So, Dayong throws him a rope and urges him to climb up along with Liang. On the other hand, most of the enemies are still alive, but have sustained injuries. It is then revealed that Captain Williams was the one who called in the unexpected shooting. He contacts John and berates him for letting Liang go, as the latter is in possession of some top secret classified info. After a while, Captain William arrives at the scene with a large number of soldiers. He wants to capture Liang alive and force the information out of him. In the meantime, Leoer proceeds to wrap the rope around Liang's unconscious body. John, who is fed up with William's orders, picks up his rifle and shoots Leoer in the chest killing him. That was fortunate for me, I didn't know how to pronounce that guy's name. This results in Dayong being the sole survivor of the fifth squad, and now, the rest of the mission is in his hands. Suddenly, Liang opens his eyes and starts to unravel the bandages from his body wound. He notices Dayong in the distance, and proceeds to write something down on the bandages with his own blood. Unfortunately, Captain Williams spots the act, and figures out that Liang is trying to pass the top secret intel. He orders John to take action, and the cunning soldier immediately shoots both of Liang's hands to stop him from writing. Terrified by the incident, Dayong flees the surrounding area, while the enemy troops move forward to capture a barely alive Liang. They then proceed to escort him to their base for treatment, but Liang cleverly takes out a syringe and commits the unthinkable with it. Dayong, who is witnessing all this from a new position, gets riled up and decides to rain hell on the enemies. He continuously shifts his position and finishes off every troop sent after Liang without missing a shot or being discovered. Dayong then leaves the area and plans a strategy of his own. Meanwhile, Captain Williams blames John for Liang's death and yells at him continuously. This frustrates John so much that he gets ready to shoot the captain dead. However, at the last moment, he calms down and withdraws his weapon. After a while, heavy artillery and weapons finally reach the battlefield. As per Captain Williams' request, they immediately begin to fire mortars targeting the hill where the last fifth squad member is hiding and completely demolish it. Fortunately, Dayong is already on the
the opposite side of the hill and has a great angle on Captain Williams. He then takes the shot and his bullet flies through the air, eventually hitting the captain in the head and killing him. This makes all the troops panic as Dayong has outmaneuvered them. Hence, they defer to their senior John for further orders. Fed up with the games and wanting to finish the job by himself, John orders all the troops to retreat and asks for a tank to be behind. Shortly after, the little boy, Yuan, again makes his way into the valley looking for Liang. Unfortunately for him, he notices his soldier friend dead and starts crying. With Yuan's sudden appearance, an idea strikes John's mind. He and his junior Jack abduct the little boy and drive off, hoping they can force him to give a fake statement in court martial. However, Dayong is still not done with them, so he rigs a bomb along the tank's tracks. Soon, an explosion ensues, and the tank stops working. Inside, thick smoke begins to spread, making it difficult for the Americans to breathe. Despite this, they decide to stay inside, and even manage to spot Dayong from the bulletproof glass. John immediately loads up the tank gun and starts shooting, realizing the danger. Dayong momentarily lays down and shoots all of the bulletproof glass so that the enemies can't see him anymore. However, his plan fails miserably when John manages to shoot him in the back. Assuming that the last 5th squad member is finally dead, Jack partially opens the tank hatch to get a closer look at him. But right then, Dayong suddenly turns his body and shoots Jack right in the head. Devastated by the loss of his junior, John decides to end it once and for all. He readies two rifles and then goes beneath the tank. Meanwhile, the wounded Dayong crawls his way to a nearby rock as he is bleeding. He then puts pressure on his wound with some bandages and wraps it with his belt. A few moments later, Dayong throws a grenade towards John, but it falls extremely short. As John laughs at the failed attempt, he introduces himself and praises Dayong for his impressive shooting skills. He also plants a decoy sniper between the tank tires, hoping he can fool Dayong. However, the latter is not going to easily fall for it, and instead, he uses the old spoon trick that Captain Liu had taught him. He eventually spots the enemy's location and positions himself in such a way that when John shoots at the spoon, he can immediately counter fire. The plan works, and John momentarily exposes himself while firing at the spoon. Dayong takes full advantage of the split second and takes his final shot. The bullet scrapes John's rifle and passes straight through his head, finishing him off instantly. Nothing but headshots for our boy Dayong. After the final showdown, he loots John's dead body and finds a newspaper containing images of Liu and the other members of the 5th squad. Dayong then enters the tank and unties Yuan and makes a request for candy. It turns out that Liang was able to successfully pass the message on to Dayong, which read, Child Candy on the bandage. The child is obviously Yuan, and on his hair, there is a piece of candy which was placed by Liang. The candy contains a small, crumpled up paper, and after seeing this, the two head off home. As they walk, they meet a group of soldiers who has come to their rescue. Dayong passes on the intel to his senior, which will help to receive the ongoing conflict. The movie ends with the soldiers calling out the names of the members of the 5th squad, implying that their legacy will live on forever. This movie may have copied the ending of Enemy at the Gates, but I'm going to give it a pass. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.